Yeah. So here we are with everyone. We've got Comrade Pollock. Brilliant. We've got Ashley Rose. Rochelle White. And uh, what's your name? Charlotte Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> Why you did that on the last recording? Yeah, no, I'm not very good with names. And it says, no, no, it doesn't say a name. But let's go. So we've got everyone here who was involved in the making of memory traps, some fine actors with here tonight, as along with my counterpartner, Comrade, who helped me to create this awesome little lockdown film. So we thought tonight we would sit and have a little chat about how we made this film, kind of what gave us the inspiration, how fun it was, how we overcame obstacles, and how we actually successfully made a film hey lockdown boom at myself so first of all i want to say a massive thank you to all of you for stepping on board and actually getting involved in this project now ashley i want to start with you Okay. Um, now, weirdly enough, uh, none of us actually know you in yeah. person. I'm, um, I'm just like the virtual girl. Yeah, which, which is a bit strange. So the first question I have for you is, you know, what was it like kind of coming on board and doing like a virtual film with a load of people you don't know? I think it was, I was really excited because I, I when I joined, I thought everyone was going to be in the same boat. I thought we were all going to be a bunch of strangers. And then I realised that I was the only person that didn't know the other people um, involved. So I was kind of like, oh, God. you know, like being the new kid and you're kind of like integrating yourself, integrating yourself into like a new friendship group that all already know each other and have like inside jokes and things. Um, but it was actually surprisingly welcoming. And I didn't feel like this odd sore thumb that was just kind of like sticking out of the group. So, yeah, it was it was good. It was good. I felt like. I found I found a community of people, you know, like and all that cringy cliche stuff. But yeah, it was it was fun. I love it. And um, Charlotte, uh, no, not Charlotte, Lottie. <laughs> so Lottie and Rachel, what kind of made you guys want to get involved in something like this? I don't mind who goes first. Well, I mean, obviously, I know you, and I'd seen some of Comrade's work, although I hadn't actually met him before, and I knew how talented you both were. So I thought it would be incredible to work with you guys. I'd wanted to work with you both for quite a while, if I'm honest. And also I think the fact it's such a unique opportunity. Like there are so many films that are happening via Zoom and I think they're incredible, but the fact you were seeing us through a camera lens and recording it as though we were on a set, it was something that I'd never get to experience under different circumstances. And also you were giving me the opportunity to act during lockdown and especially because I'm based in the Midlands. I felt like I was isolated from everything. If a job came up, it was always London local or Manchester local. Whereas you guys said, no, we are going to do it remotely, but we want to make it as close to the finished product we'd get if we were working together in real life. Mm -hmm. So it, was, it sounded super exciting and it was that exciting, luckily. Uh, just to tag on from that as well. I don't think an idea like this would have come about without lockdown. Mm -hmm. Like if we we all uh, ugh, if we all had access to like normal sets and everything I don't think anyone would even consider hey why don't we put on the extra pressure and the extra stress of not seeing anyone and we're going to make a film so I definitely sympathize with you Lottie because I'm based in Sussex and like you said everything is like oh you've got to be by a big city blah 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 and it's like oh god I'm never going to get to act for like the entirety of this COVID experience but it's is provided an outlet for that creativity for sure. Yeah, I mean, Lottie has basically said what I was going to say. Like, I'd seen Comrades writing before and I knew Jay. And similarly, I'd secretly been wanting to work with you both for quite a while, but I was trying to keep it on the down low and not be like a fangirl. <laughs> um, it happens. And then, <laughs> yeah, it sounded like an ideal challenge, but knowing that there was such a strong team behind it already made it like a risk that wasn't really a risk like I knew it was going to turn out good so that's cool yeah so for any future viewers in future times what happened was in November of 2020 we went into a second lockdown as recording this we're in a third lockdown so it's getting depressing <laughs> but in November 2020 we went into a second lockdown 
And I called Comrade up and I was like, look, I'm not going to finish this year with no film to show for it. You know, we've gone the whole year of not filming anything. It's depressing. It's boring. How would you feel about making something kind of online? I remember the call you gave me, actually. It was, I think it was quite late at night and you just kind of spelled it out to me. And I remember thinking like, yeah, actually, this is something to keep me occupied because um, at the time I was... Um, so between the two lockdowns, I had just come off of a shoot that we'd managed, we'd managed to shoot a short film literally pretty much under the wire. And it was, I was waiting for the edit to be turned around and stuff and I had nothing really to do. And then you called me and told me about this. And I thought, yeah, actually, this is a good way to keep myself going, keep myself motivated, um, you know, set myself a challenge. And also it kind of helped that, um, like... I mean, in, from, from the get-go, we were like, we're just going to put the film on YouTube. We're not going to try and, you know, make, you know, an absolute masterwork here. We're just going to have some fun with it. Just, you know, have have a, enjoy making a film. And it was like, yeah, cool. But that actually took a load of weight off the shoulders and made it just an exciting, engaging experience. For anyone who hasn't seen Memory Trap yet, who can sort of give a brief synopsis of what it's about? Okay, so literally... Um... It is about a group of housemates who are stuck or they get stuck and isolated in their rooms and they have to work together as a team to figure out how to get out. That's the literal premise of the film. But the metaphorical and the reason that I was so drawn to this film was because underneath that very basic premise, there is so much subtext in terms of it being about the isolation that we're all experiencing right now during COVID and being in lockdown and feeling like you cannot escape. But also the fact that it's about mental health, about community, about having friends around you and supporting each other. I think there's a lot of correlation between, you know, how we're feeling on the inside and what's happening around us on the outside. And I just feel like this film really tackles all those core issues of you do need to check on those who are around you. You do need to communicate with people. You do need to be there for your friends. Even if you're not physically in the same place, you still need to connect with each other and find ways of working through things because, you know, everyone can send a text saying, oh yeah, I feel fine. But I think deep down, we're all suffering in some aspects with our mental health during this lockdown. You know, as creatives, we've all gone, oh God, what are we going to do for a year not making any films? And We've all gone, do you know what? If we all pull together, we can actually we can actually make something that's pretty decent and we can all do this. So I think that's a really good subtext for the film. So um Lossie, I'll come to you first. Um it's so obviously, you know, kind of filming a whole senior event. How was it kind of filming for you, having to kind of be by yourself, kind of going off your instincts and not having kind of any other actors or people with you to kind of direct you what to do? Well, I felt incredibly lucky that the way we set it up is I'd obviously put up the camera, but then I'd position my laptop behind it. So you guys were there to give feedback. And although it was through this weird way, you were watching back takes and directing me. And I think the fact you guys communicate so clearly and were so involved in the entire process was amazing. And obviously, I miss the human interaction of being on set with somebody and having that moment. But because we were all speaking as a group for so long before, we'd managed to establish those connections and the friendships and we had a sort of idea of how other people might say something. So it was very instinctive and it sort of allowed me to do it the way you do a self-tape where you get to interpret the text however you want, but I still had the physical freedom of being on the set. So that was, mm. I really loved it. That's very cool. And Rachel, your part was slightly different in the fact that you came on and did some voice acting. This is a poor effort, even from you, Amy. What the? At least try to understand it. So how kind of was that for you? Was it kind of any different to how it would normally be? I mean, it's different, it certainly different to not be on set, but I think I had a lot of, I suppose I, suppose I had it quite easy. Um, without having the pressure of someone being there but it was it was definitely a new experience um I've done a little bit of voice acting before but I think not knowing what the rest of the film looked like and kind of how it was going on the other side it was kind of interesting to work out 
you know, how am I going to approach this when I don't know what the rest of the scene looks like? Tesla, Faraday, Hawking, your attempts insult them. So when we started this, we came forward with a four week plan. So every Friday we'd get together over Zoom, have a meeting and kind of like, you know, update you guys where we were with the scripts, cast in, blah, 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 and kind of schedule uh, recording filming sessions. How did that feel for you? Did that feel kind of like it worked? Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> I, Mission accomplished. I really feel like without, okay. The, the thing about being on a set is that nine times out of 10, the thing that actually makes being on a set is like what Lottie said. It's about the human interaction and being there and kind of creating these almost like behind the scenes memories that make shooting a film so memorable. And I think in a way we still kind of had that. It did still feel like we were going to set because, you know, we had such a tight schedule and we were all so in sync with, this is the time in which we need to do it. These are the shooting days. This is when we're going to do it. It felt like we'd all been given a set schedule and we were just going to set for that day, shooting it. We were interacting with each other and we'd, got so much interaction in between each other's filming days and set days like Lost said we knew each other we knew how the other person was interacting and stuff, even though we weren't with them physically seen so I definitely think it was like monumental to the production yeah for sure it fostered a sense of community amongst us and I, I think Ashley hit the nail on the head like I don't think it would have been as fun without it um, and I, I wonder how we would have communicated if we hadn't had those get-togethers essentially and that sort of overarching sort of it was an overview each week it was right this is what has been done this is what still needs to be done and it kept everybody in the loop and all these different departments connected and communicating really well so it was really useful. We were involved in the entire thing and that was incredible there are so few opportunities where actors have such involvement from the concept to the finished product, from the fact that they let us pick our characters and then we had one-on-one -on -one discussions with you about who we thought they were and how that shaped the script and having that creative freedom to then doing read-throughs and getting to see how they bounced off each other and even being allowed to improvise a little bit during the days, despite the fact you guys had to stay so on top of that due to the fact we were filming that. We were in touch with the, the writer and that never mm. happened. So yeah. The case of the writer writes something, it gets handed to a producer who then finds a director, who then finds the actors. And by the time the actors have got the script, it's gone through such a filtration process. You're almost so far removed from the original story and the original concept. But, you know, we have that one-on-one -on -one with the, the, the brains behind it. You know what I mean? We have the producer and the director and the mm. writer all in one place at our if there was anything at any point that we were unsure of we knew exactly who to turn to oh we've got a question about this but I don't even think we were that confused by our characters or anything like that because like Lottie said we we knew each other so well we'd formed this kind of weird online friendship even though like Lottie and I have never met I felt like our characters we knew the interactions between each other as if we really were housemates. It's even like when me and Lottie were picking the characters, there wasn't an argument over who was going to be who. It was, you're a Sadie and I'm an Amy. And it was just, we just kind of fit into it. It just felt very natural, very just right, I guess. What you, what you were saying before about, um, just from my point of view as the writer and stuff, I'm never used to having a lot of time with the actors i mean you know if i if at all i'll get maybe like one or two conversations at most with the actor before they go to set um and then it's over to the director and well this time around yeah like you said we kind of constructed it so much ourselves as well not just in the script but also just on the day it was just sort of like well do do you think she would do this do you think they would do that no, yes, or they would approach it this way. Yeah, obviously sometimes the director can have such a different vision compared to what the writer had in his yeah. mind. And sometimes you don't know who who you're meant to be kind of siding with. Almost. So you try and form like middle ground of trying yeah. to please everyone. 
which as an actor you kind of feel like you're being a puppet that's pulled in different directions but this mm. I felt like I could really honor your guys vision and what you wanted from it and not feel like I was letting someone down or making the wrong choices or anything so it was really comforting do you think um kind of having that freedom to kind of choose kind of how you choreograph let's say your own scene do you think that helped you to kind of explore what your character could possibly do I think in a bit because a lot of the external view within the room itself has a lot to do with how the character views themselves I think like the fact that Jack had so much within the sink and it was all very much close-ups of around his mouth and it sort of seemed to be going through his head that everything to do with him was to do about if there was blood or something disgusting and that was the only time there was real focus upon him was when he was mm. being made to feel like he was gross and similarly I'd say in my room the fact that a lot of it was further away because she pushed people away and she tried to distance herself. Like It's such tiny things. Mm. The yeah. fact that you guys helped us position it and stuff, you'd go, you sort of look into symbolism a little bit. <laughs> you, you can't help it. You go, oh, well, I think that might actually mean. And the fact the only conversation I had where it was a shot you generally see was with a poster. It just showed how much she put onto that and how much she was believing what he was saying. And I think contrast that had mm. with the fact you had a close-up that was pretty much like this she went out because despite what's on the other side of that door it's reality and it's how other people view you and it is not whatever corrupt version you've got in your head while you're suffering so you've all had experience of being on sort of proper film sets and that was there anything on this that was taken away that actually was a benefit of the fact it was taken away um, I mean, we've talked a bit about, you know, more creative freedom and stuff, but, you know, anything physically there that you didn't have to worry about as much? I think one element is, obviously, although none of us have technical skills of setting up lights in camera, or at least I definitely don't, um, <laughs> so that was a bit of a challenge. I think being in a space that you're so comfortable with and that you know, I knew exactly how I could throw myself onto that sofa because I've done it a million times before. I mm. knew how hard I could pull the door handle before it came off. And I think there were certain things about being in a space that is yours that allowed us to create an environment so easily that you could go, I'm basically in my head because we're physically trapped in a space that we have been seeing for the last year now. <laughs> This maybe this is just the impatient part of me, but there wasn't any waiting around. So like normally as an actor, you get to set at like 8 a.m. or you'll have like a 7 a.m. call time. You won't actually start doing any work until like midday because they're setting up lights and they're setting up mics and they're doing mm -hmm. tests. And sometimes you're just stood there. You're not even acting because they just want to test the lighting or they want to test your mic or whatever. And sometimes as an actor, you can be like, oh, I just want to get on with it. Like I've had all this emotion. Mm -hmm up in my head of I've really thought about this character I've internalized it and then you kind of like oh you relax a bit and then you've got to work yourself back up whereas this was like you just got on just did your thing you shot it all and it was done and you almost felt like after that day because it was such an intense day you're kind of like oh I can let that character like almost go a little bit because you've been holding on to them for so long um whereas like I said when you're on a set and you're waiting around and stuff you you feel more like yourself than you do your actual character. Whereas that whole day, I was totally in like the zone of being Amy. And I feel like Dossie definitely sympathised with that. Like. And stuff and the fact that, like, because I'm normally used to, like when I write something normally and it gets put out there, there's like loads and loads of drafts just on my end. And then the producer gets back to me and is like, oh, yeah, that's good, but can you change this? And can you give him a dog and a gun and call it Taken 2 and blah, blah, blah. Um, and with this, it was just so simple. I just literally wrote it in three days. And the thing is, like, I'm, I'm, I'm weird. It's like, I'm like one of those people that kind of when I, when a script is done, I just, like, I don't hang on to my characters. I don't particularly like hanging on to them. I just kick them to the curb. It's like, okay, we're done get out of my life like that's it um and that's why it was kind of refreshing with this it was just so speedy I definitely feel like yeah. having that deadline though helped so much because I think 
a lot of the times people go oh let's do something in lockdown or let's create a film and the idea hangs in the air for like months on end and nothing gets done and stuff but and this is this is again where the communication thing comes in and having those zoom meetings and knowing each other so well and knowing okay Lottie's gonna react like this and Jack's gonna react like this blah 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 you you couldn't let anyone else down you couldn't slack off you couldn't like not apart everyone was so dedicated and everyone was so integral like every little person's contribution mattered so much to this whole mm. production. and I think if one person hadn't been as dedicated or one person didn't really care that much whole part I think having you have this set amount of time really push the whole thing along it wouldn't have done without it you know ironically I think despite the amount of tech involved it all felt very organic like the whole yeah. process just it just kind of worked it was really nice yeah. to see so i've had a few people kind of get in touch about kind of doing their own lockdown film um especially in this one where it's so much longer so what mm-hmm. advice would you give to someone who's thinking of starting up a lockdown film I would, yeah <laughs> <Don't> do it percent, <laughs> but also have a very simple clear concept like comrade said this at the beginning like you weren't looking to overcomplicate it and try and make this like incredible, like we're going to make it in 3D and it's going to have all this visual effects, mm. and lasers and all this. It was like, keep it simple, keep it very stripped back. Just do what you can do. You know, don't think of a concept or a storyline that you know you can't build. Like don't try and create a cast where they all need to be together if you live alone, you don't have access to anyone. So I would say be really realistic in what you think you can achieve and work from there. Hmm. I would say, um, like, my, my practical advice would be imagine, you, yeah, kind of like Ashley just said, like, imagine you were doing it completely on your own. What can you do, like, just in your room? And, I mean, that's how we came up with the idea for this. It's like, what can we do in our room? Well, we can't get out of our room. That's it. Done. Like, that right there is the main thing. So imagine what can I do on my own and then just apply that to every single individual and build the story that way. Definitely need a good team. Don't work with people that, I mean, this is a risk because you hadn't worked with me before and stuff, but I would suggest, I think it worked so well because you guys all did know each other and you all had an idea of how, you know, you were fans of each other's work and stuff. So I feel like that really Mm -hmm. helped. Whereas if you, wrangle a bunch of strangers to get together who have maybe various different levels of professionalism or you know some people have worked on sets before and some people haven't it's going to be a bit of a train wreck so like try and get a group of like-minded individuals who all have the same kind of drive the same enthusiasm same expectations as well like you don't want someone like you said that's going to overcomplicate it and imagine that it's going to be some blockbuster film when the rest of you are working on a small lockdown project like mm. okay right so let's let's finish this on a funny note i'm going to go around each of you one at a time uh comrade we'll start with you best moment making this best moment um hmm. i can't really think of funniest best would probably be i think when we I think it was when I first kind of it was it was a private moment, but it was so you you would basically set me this task of just come up with a story, come up with an idea, um, whatever it is, and you know let's let's talk again in a few days. And for me, it was like the moment when I was going through that exercise that I was telling myself, okay, well, if I'm in if I'm if I was an actor in my room by myself, what can I do or not do? And then I just sort of caught sight of the door, and I was like, oh that's it that's 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 it right there because that's that's the goal and that's the stakes right there um they gotta they, they want to get out to the side and they physically can't otherwise they're trapped in there forever like that's that was it. it was perfect it's the most basic storytelling ever and you know maybe it didn't require me to have an epiphany or whatever to get it but i think one of my favorite moments was definitely the first read through of the full script, just because how naturally we all bounced off each other. I thought it was incredible. And it made me feel like we could really do something amazing. And then the communication you guys had with us when you were speaking it through, 
it felt very much like a project or like something that was actually happening and it was real but there was also such a good sense of support within it and that everybody cared about each other getting to do it and we all did just want to make something so I think just that day for me is something that still makes me smile to be honest that's like <laughs> okay I've got one that's like my favorite moment but it's kind of selfish but I'll I'll tell the funny one first if that's okay so when Jack read in the script that he had to be sick he was like how am I going to be sick and I was like it's fine you can make some sick and I was like what kind of consistency or color do you want it to be and I was giving him basically like a recipe like how to make fake six and I, I it was late at night I can't remember exactly what time it is but he was whatsapping me videos of him making these different six and like putting them in little bowls and he was like right this one I've had in the fridge for this hours and this one I've left out at room temperature and this one I have added this many things it was so funny like and I'm going mm, I'd give that bowl of sick an eight out of ten color slightly off or like something like this <laughs> but my my favorite moment and again this is so selfish was when the poster got made. because today you and I had the call and you had this kind of abstract concept in your head that for some weird reason we've been doing the whole project and I was like I can see it I, I totally know what you mean I visualize it but to come up with a film poster that everyone else is going to understand without acting photos or any pictures of the set or anything like that to come up with this artistic image in your mind how am I going to sell this story this whole concept with just a piece of art and I made this and I was like oh I think I've nailed it I've got it but then you have that moment of is everyone else going to get it and I think having everyone's reaction and them understanding it and being like yes this feels like a real film now because apart from like a level media I'd never made a film poster before I'd never done anything yeah I'm I'm down for the like it's real moments and epiphany <laughs> um I suppose yeah there was a little one when we first all got together and I was like here I am with a bunch of like-minded individuals who just have this drive to just be creative despite the circumstance um and it was really nice to have that immediate connection with everyone like it sounds really sappy but like you know if you if you haven't got anyone else creative around you it can feel quite isolating um mm -hmm. so this seemed like the perfect uh, medium and sort of I guess film in general like it became almost like a a microcosm of what we were all feeling mm, um, so we all kind of inject our thoughts and feelings into that but I think it's an obvious one but seeing the premiere like we had our little premiere where we all got together on zoom and we all yeah, watched that was cute. the cut right favorite moment Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is such a cliche. I think probably for me, it was probably the day it actually went up on YouTube because it was that kind of like, bloody hell, we've actually done it. Yeah. Well, it was Christmas Eve, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Christmas Eve. We're all in good spirits. And we thought, do you know what? At the start, about six weeks before, when we went to Comrade with the idea, we were said that, you know, this could either work or this could fall flat on our face and be an absolute disaster. And actually to see kind of everyone have that same energy throughout the whole way through, it sort of, you know work really smoothly as well not just kind of not just make a film but to make it so easily and flow so well and probably a lot easier than most films you make on set which is yeah. really good um oh, I yeah, think, much much easier than most films yeah. <laughs> which is I, I i still don't know why it, like in theory it sounds like it should be a hell of a lot more challenge than mm. you know being actually on set and actually being able to, to tell someone what you want them to do in person but how to tell someone what to do over a dodgy internet sounds like it should be more of a challenge than it actually is um so I think it probably was you know just kind of seeing it up and everyone happy with it as well and not kind of been like uh, kind of you know I don't really know why we made that the fact that it actually felt like we made that for a reason even if like you know Comrade says we didn't make it for festivals or to win any awards or anything we made it we, we made it for us like made that's it for the us. thing and honestly I think that's good enough yeah given and the I, circumstances I'm just happy that we we all finished yeah. 2020 with a film Okay, so we'll wrap it up there. Um, thank you guys again for, you know, getting involved in Memory Trap. It's been an absolute pleasure to make it all. If you haven't watched it yet, then please click 
Oh my god, I thought I can't speak today. <laughs> if you want to watch the film, then of course click the link below. Um, all their, Ashley, Lossie and Rachel and Conrad, all their socials will be in the links as well. So go check them out as actors and filmmakers and go and see what they're all about. Also click the link as well to below so you can see their interviews. Um, up. Conrad's will be up very, very, very soon. And apart from that, keep safe, keep well, keep making films. Boom on that. Trying gets boring when the party is over.